Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, episode 129. Today on the podcast, 25 easy ways to go green at work. Number one on the list, just stay in bed. This is Jen Swanson, your host, and I'd like to welcome you to the Communication Diva podcast, where I help you to get the job, to love your work, and to advance your career. And I wanted to start out today by thanking those of you who have contacted me to be beta testers for my upcoming online course that'll be launching. I I thought it would be ready before now, but it's not, so I'm hoping it'll be ready by the end of the month. And the course is called How to Ace a Job Interview When You Haven't Interviewed in a Long Time. And if you don't know what a beta tester is, what I'm looking for are a few people to be the first to go through my course before it goes live. And those people will get the course at a hugely discounted registration fee. And then the idea is that they would give me feedback and a testimonial at the end of it. So if you are interested in learning how to get ready for your next job interview, and if you would be willing to be a beta tester, and if you're listening to this in June of 2017, then please send me an email to jenn at communicationdiva.com. And in the subject line, just put beta test course, and then I'll contact you and I'll send you further details. Another thing that I've got going on right now is a free five-day Jumpstart Your Job Search Challenge. So if you want to start a job search and you aren't sure where or how to go about doing that, let me be your inspiration. Every day for five days, you'll get an email in your inbox just for five days, and each email will have one task for you to complete that day. By the end of the five days, I promise you, you will be ready to launch into your job search. If you would like to join the challenge, come on over to communicationdiva.com and on the right-hand side of the website if you're looking at it on a desktop or towards the bottom if you're looking at it on a mobile phone, um, you will see a, I think it's a teal green colored box. If you click that and fill out your email address, you will join the five-day challenge and every day Starting uh, the next day, you will get an email that gives you one task to complete. And for five days, you'll get in emails into your inbox. And by the end, you'll be well on your way. So if you're interested in that challenge, check it out. I've also got it all over Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, all over the place. So take a look at that. All right. So that's all the announcements I have. Uh, today's topic uh, came to me. When I was in an office not that long ago waiting to present a live workshop and I noticed that the office had quite a few green elements to it and I asked about it and it seems that they had recently decided to do this to go green as an office and there was quite a complicated recycling system set up and there were no actual garbage cans apparently or if they were they were really really tiny ones and apparently all the lighting had been changed to the the um, low emission lighting um, the smart bulbs or whatever they are and it got me thinking about the ways in which a workplace and more importantly an individual within that workplace could be more green, could uh, do things that were easy, that didn't take up a lot of time or energy or effort to have a lighter impact upon the planet in the workplace because we spend a lot of time at work and there are things that you can do that are fairly straightforward to uh, make your footprint on this planet a little bit lighter. And if you've got people at work who can jump in and join in, and maybe your management or your boss can join in, then you can have uh, quite a significant impact on uh, on uh, on Earth and on on um, on the garbage that we put out and the waste that we generate by uh, by getting people to join in. So you might even run a contest or or do a challenge or something. Maybe uh, maybe you present the idea to your manager and maybe they'll run some kind of community building 
um, you know, office building challenge or something with a prize. Who knows? But I, I found, I came up with 25 easy uh, ways to do this. And so I thought I would list those for you today and, uh, and see what you think. All right. So the first one is recycle. Now that seems pretty obvious, but it's still not something that you see everywhere yet, even today. And if your office doesn't have a recycling system set up, what you can do is bring some of the things you use home to recycle and ask about setting something up officially for things that you can't take home to recycle. Because of course you can't take home sensitive documents or things you can't take home from your workplace. But maybe there are things that you can recycle in your home recycling program if you have one, uh, if there isn't a way to do it at work. And uh, if there is a way to do it at work, then that would be great. In our home, we are super, super recyclers. We barely throw out any garbage. Maybe one of those little plastic shopping bags, maybe once a month of garbage. Everything else gets composted. Uh, we have what's called a green can program where you can put food scraps and food waste and lawn clippings and all that kind of thing into a green bin that gets picked up and taken to a, um, a composting site. We have composters in the yard and uh, recycle everything we can possibly recycle. And so we're kind of, uh, this is kind of a big topic for us in our home. Um, and so we've done a lot of things in our family uh, as far as um, making choices and, and doing things differently that, uh, that promote the, the less waste, the, as, much, uh, as little waste as we can, um, and, and make things still efficient. We don't buy plastic wrap in our house. We have uh, the beeswax, um, uh, the cloth that's infested, <laughs> infested, um, that is infused, I guess is a nicer word, with beeswax, that uh, these things are used uh, to cover up food in the fridge rather than um, using plastic wrap. And you just rinse them off and you can use them again. So we do that kind of thing. Um, a friend of ours, what they do is when they stay in hotels or, or motels where they have the little shower caps, they'll take the shower caps home and use them to cover food. Uh, because they have the elastic around them. So that's an idea that I heard of as well. Anyway, I'm off track, but uh, recycle was number one. Number two is nix the water coolers and the water uh, in bottles and bring a stainless steel reusable water bottle and, uh, and do the same with your reusable coffee mug. If there uh, aren't any styrofoam or paper cups around, people will soon get the idea that they need to bring their own mug or their own water bottle or their own glasses as long as your tap water is safe to drink and um, and so try not to have the styrofoam cups or the paper cups if at all possible and bring your own I recently was gifted with an amazing stainless steel water bottle that keeps ice cubes frozen for hours and it's it's fabulous and I'm I take it everywhere I go now Number three, in the kitchen and bathrooms, if you can use cloth napkins in the kitchen and real towels instead of the paper disposable ones, you can take turns with taking them home to wash if you don't have a laundry facility on site. Now again, this isn't going to work in every workspace, but if you're in a small enough work site, this might be something that you can do and somebody can maybe take turns taking things home and laundering them. Number four is have a cold jug of water in the fridge. At home, what we do is we refill three wine bottles. We've taken the labels off and we've got three wine bottles that we fill with water and keep in the fridge all the time because they stack, they're, they're quite thin and narrow so they'll fit in the doors of the fridge or they'll fit on the shelf and they actually look kind of nice on the table. And so if we're having dinner and people would like water, we throw some glasses on the table and pull out this frosted wine glass full of cold water from the fridge. And uh, it works quite well at home. So be, make sure you have cold uh, water in the fridge and you won't need to use bottled water. 
Number five is take care uh, at work with your meeting food and your snacks. These could be sourced from local and sustainable sources and, uh, and not just plastic trays that you buy from big box stores that have all the fruit and vegetables cut up. Frankly, the fruit and veggies that come out of those veggie, those already pre-made trays are not always fresh. Sometimes they've been sitting there for hours and it's typically the same old fare. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's the same old big box uh, fruit tray or veggie tray. So it doesn't take very long to cut up vegetables. You can get things uh, from local um, markets uh, and uh, it takes a few moments to cut things up. Or you can buy a, a loaf, something nice from a local bakery and cut that up. And these things are going to taste better and they're also going to cost less because you're paying someone to do all of that uh, food prep. So if you have to have a meeting, um, if you have to have a meeting, it, it might be nice to take care with where you get the food from for your meeting. Another thing is you might you might uh, have somebody cater it or take turns doing it, but um, but just buying those things that are in single use plastic uh, that has that that has uh, has to be then dealt with afterwards is not as efficient. It's faster. I know that, and I get that. That when you don't have time, it's faster to grab something. And believe me, I've done it, but it's a lot nicer to think ahead a little bit and uh, and bring your own. Number six is bring your own lunch. And these days, brown bagging it doesn't mean you literally have to use brown bags and it doesn't have to be something boring. You can use a reusable lunch kit with a freezer pack. You can get glass jars, the mason jars, and I've seen a lot of things on Pinterest and Instagram uh, with these layered salads that you can make into mason jars, and, uh, and they pack really well for lunch. There are stainless steel containers you can pack your food into, and this will save you money, and it will save you time during your workday rather than having to go find food and then purchase food. If you've already got it, you might be able to sit outside and enjoy the sun or sit and visit with your uh, colleagues in your lunchroom or something rather than having to go find food that might not be all that healthy for you in the first place. So... Um, so try bringing your own lunch with you and it will be, uh, it will be healthier and it will save you money in the end. Number seven is if you do go out and grab fast food, try bringing your own container for the fast food place to pack into. Now, some places won't do that, but some places will do that. You can get these really nice stainless steel bento boxes for sushi and uh, glass containers with lids for salads and sandwiches. If they won't pack into your containers, then one of the things you can do is to skip the plastic cutlery that they often would hand to you and use real forks and knives back at the office. You can also get these really cute little sustainable bamboo travel cutlery kits that come in a little cloth case that you can keep in your car or your briefcase or your purse, which will eliminate that one-time use plastic um, that, uh, that just gets tossed away. And uh, I heard something recently about the shorelines, and I can't remember where it was, but it was it might have been the uh, the west coast of Vancouver Island, and the volunteers that were there doing some cleanup were horrified when they found um, just just unlimited amounts of plastic that had washed up against the shoreline from disposable plastic stuff that was all along the shore. It was quite, they were quite horrified and weren't sure quite how to clean that up. Number eight is start composting in your kitchen, uh, office kitchen, or ask your management for a compost bin to be installed. They have indoor worm composters. Now, some people might think that would be a horrible idea. Or, uh, or outdoor regular composters, depending on what kind of workspace that you are working in. If it's uh, a place that would, uh, would allow for that or would work for that, uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's a place outside that you can put a composter that would help with the gardens around uh, your workspace. Who knows? But it is possible um, to start composting in your office kitchen uh, in some places. In some instances, that would work. In others, of course, that wouldn't work. 
Number nine is if your office uses the old fashioned filter and coffee grounds style coffee maker, first of all, good for you. And secondly, you can save the grounds and occasionally put them in the office plant pots um, or use put them outside at the base of any landscaping because coffee grounds are really good for the soil and they can be used to nourish your plants indoors or out. Now, if your office has one of those more modern, convenient yet bad for the planet single serve coffee machines, See if you can get the reusable little K-cups that can be refilled instead of the one-time use of the plastic pods um, that uh, they say are recyclable but apparently aren't. I heard John Sylvan, who was the inventor of Keurig, um, say in an interview that he regrets inventing this. The, the company's now sold. Keurig owns the company. But the guy who invented uh, the 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 whole invention of it, um, said in an interview that he, he regrets inventing it because of the plastic waste. And, and apparently in 2014, 9.8 billion, that's billion with a B, of these little pods, these little K-cups were sold worldwide. And if you lined them up end to end, 9.8 billion, those discarded little coffee pods would contain enough plastic to circle the globe more than 10 times. And even the inventor said that the cups have to be made a certain way to keep the coffee fresh, so they are not fully recyclable, even if they say they are. But I know that someone has invented a refillable one, so there is some kind of green workaround available. All right, I'll get off my soapbox about those kind of coffee machines now (laughs) and uh, and go to number 10. Get a plant. If you don't have a plant on your desk, try getting one. Your air quality will be improved and you will quite literally be greening up the place. Plants are really good for uh, for cleaning the air. Uh, and they look kind of nice too. Number 11 is try to use less hot water when you're washing your hands in the bathroom. Turn the water off while you're r- uh, rubbing the soap, uh, while you're lathering up, and then turn the water back on. That water comes out pretty fast and we waste a lot of water. Number 12 is get rid of chemical-laden bathroom odor spray and use uh, white vinegar in a mister instead. Uh, Same with those scented gel things that are meant to absorb odors. They're quite toxic and a lot of those um, scented things that are meant to take odors out of the air in the bathrooms are not really safe to be breathing in. Uh, White vinegar baking soda in little dishes, those kinds of things. They don't work as instantly, of course, but then you're not spraying chemicals into the air that you're then going to breathe in. Number 13, speaking of toxic, replace all the office cleaning supplies, if you're allowed to, of course, with natural cleaning products. You can use a microfiber cloth to dust off your desk and your computer keyboard. There are multiple ways you can uh, go green in the uh, area of cleaning supplies, not just in the office, but in your home as well. Number 14, uh, use fans and open windows if you have windows that open instead of always turning on the air conditioner. I know some office buildings are considered smart buildings and don't have windows that open and have automated temperature control. But there are lots of workplaces out there that aren't that high tech. And if you can use fans and open windows, you will save energy. And fresh air is always healthier than the recycled office air. I know that when I worked in an enclosed office space with the fluorescent lighting, I got sick a lot more. I think it was the recycled air. And when somebody got sick, everybody got sick. So fresh air and open windows and fans is a better bet if you're able to do that. And again, with a lot of this stuff, you might be in a corporate situation where you can't do some of these things in your office space. Um, either because there are way too many people and it would be a whole organizational shift or because uh, you just physically can't open windows. So I get that. Number 15, if you have trouble regulating the temperature, wear layers so that you can uh, take them on and off to adjust the temperature throughout the day rather than trying to turn the heat up or down or the air conditioning on or off. You might even keep a sweater or shawl just over your, your chair and leave it at your workspace. 
Number 16, what, uh, what uses all sorts of energy even when turned off and still is still plugged in? Well, your electronics do. They call it phantom power. If you can have things plugged into a power bar and switch the whole power bar off at night or when you're finished your shift, then you're going to save energy. Because even though your computer is powered down, um, it is still drawing energy. Now, you may not be uh, able to unplug certain items, but there will be some things that you can unplug or switch right off when you're not using to save uh, that phantom power um, that is drawn when the even when the item is turned off, sometimes there is power because there are little lights on, right? Sometimes you'll you'll notice like the microwave at home has uh, the LED light for the time and that is drawing power even when the microwave is not being used. So there are ways you can save that by switching it off. Number 17, Ink and toner cartridges. These can be recycled at office supply stores and some recycling centers. So if your office doesn't make that happen, maybe you can take that on and collect the old ones in a box and then every once in a while when the box is full, take them off to be recycled. Otherwise, that plastic and chemical powder of the ink and the toner ends up in the landfill, which is really bad. So if, uh, if there is no recycling program, perhaps there is some way that you can do that. Sometimes the office supply companies that supply these things for you will accept them back to be recycled as well. So you could look into that. Number 18 is to re reduce your use of disposable batteries. If you have to use something that takes batteries, maybe you could switch to rechargeable batteries and get one of those little rechargers that plugs in and uh, you can re recharge batteries. We have that at home because we, ha we have to have batteries in things like your keyboard and your computer mouse, and uh, there are some things around the house, flashlights when the power goes out, etc., that take batteries. So we have a invested in a battery recharger and try and use rechargeable batteries. Number 19 is reduce your use of paper by double-siding documents and by reading things online instead of printing them out all the time. You can also use blank on one side papers for note paper. You can cut them up into note sized pieces and reduce the need for using post-it notes, etc. So reuse the other side of papers that, uh, that are not sensitive documents that must be shredded, but things that are just uh, used on one side. If you don't need them anymore, perhaps you can use them to, uh, to, to write notes as scrap paper. Number 20, if you can order office supplies online, you might not need to keep receiving, you know, those shiny, glossy office supply calendars or, or catalogs that come a few times a year. And that's the same thing with other hard copy reports, publications, promotional offers that come in the mail. Um, sometimes there are annual reports about this, that, and the other that come to offices. If, if you're able to contact the senders and ask for digital versions of these things wherever possible, then that will save all sorts of things, including save the company money for, from having to, the other company, from having to mail you these things. I know the little tiny church that I work at doesn't even have an office, really, and we get this great big thick catalog twice a year that has everything in it from office furniture to full-size photocopier machines. And it's completely and utterly unnecessary given that we don't have a phone, we don't have internet, and we don't even have a secretary. <laughs> so that catalog has been cancelled because it was unnecessarily coming to our little church quote-unquote office, which isn't really an office, and it just went straight into the recycling bin. We didn't ask for it. It just suddenly started to appear from this company that saw, ooh, a church. They'll have an office and then started sending us stuff. So, um, so look around and see what other things that come in the mail that don't need to come anymore if you have the authority to do something about that. Number 21 is reuse things. Think 1920s depression era, uh, you know, being able to save things and reuse things, paper clips, rubber bands, envelopes that have, you know, the big brown envelopes that maybe don't have anything written on them that you could save and use, file folders, whatever you think you can use again, then do so. 
If you're shredding paper, save the paper clips from the, 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 the shredder because you don't want those to go through the shredder. And, uh, and save any blank sheets or one-sided documents that aren't sensitive. Again, things that don't need to be shredded. And use them for notepads and notepapers. Number 22, speaking of shredding, shredded paper makes great packing material. And it's far more environmentally friendly than those styrofoam peanut things are. So consider using the contents of your shredder to fill boxes that need packing material. If you have to send something, um, the, the, padded, the shredded paper will make good packing. Number 23, if you're in a job that would support it, ask your boss if you could telecommute once a week and work from home. With all the technology now, a lot of people are working remotely and it saves energy and it saves gas and and whatever uh, mode of transport you use to commute and it saves time and um, there are all sorts of ways that working remotely can uh, can be good for the environment and and more efficient in many ways so if your job was supported you could ask would you be allowed to work one day a week from home I mean you still have to work but uh, wouldn't that be nice to save an hour and not commute? Maybe you would be more productive that way. In that same vein, virtual meetings are often a good idea. I join meetings often that would take me over an hour to get to each way by car. And because of that, it ends up being half a day for me because if you drive for an hour and then you go to a two-hour meeting and then you have to drive another hour home, that's four hours. That's half my day for a two-hour meeting. So I can save time, gas, and energy by opting to join these meetings via Skype or Zoom or FaceTime or Google Hangouts or whatever, and sometimes just by old-fashioned telephone. So think about it. Is this a meeting that I have to be at face-to-face? -face? Yes, there are some meetings that need that face-to-face -face contact. But if it's a case where you don't actually have to be there physically, would you be able to join the meeting virtually? And more and more and more people are doing that now. Lastly, number 25, we finally got to it. If you aren't able to work remotely, how do you get to work? Do you walk? That would be absolutely the best. I would, I would dream about doing that. I mean, I walk to this job. I walk downstairs to my studio uh, for, for the Communication Diva, my entrepreneurial piece. But uh, when I go out to work, I certainly do not walk. I live quite a ways away from uh, the, the church that I work at. Um, do you cycle or do you take transit? Can you carpool if you have to get there by car? If there's no other way, are you able to, instead of being the only driver in a car, can you go with someone else? Is there a ride share program? Think of ways you can make the commute itself more green. And if you can't carpool and you have to drive in a car by yourself, can you do batching of errands and run them while you were out instead of making multiple trips? So can you add a visit in with a friend or pick up groceries or your dry cleaning or something on your way home so that you are efficiently using that trip in your car? I could probably go on for another another 25, but uh, that's 25 ways that you can go green uh, in the workplace and around your work life. Most of them easy. Some of them might take a little longer to do than others. But, you know, even if you do one or two or three of them, every little bit helps. And if more and more people start to think about how they themselves can make an impact or less of an impact <laughs> on the environment as individuals, then real change will happen. So what can you do today to make a difference? I would say lots. As with anything, it takes the decision to go there in the first place, and then step by step, take action until you reach your goal. All right, well, that's it for today, friends. Don't forget to check out the Jumpstart Your Job Search Challenge. And if you want to be a beta tester for my upcoming course, please let me know. Just drop me a line, send me an email, and uh, again, put beta test course in the subject line, and I will uh, reach out to you, and, uh, and we can get that started. So until next time, try to get a little greener. This is Jen Swanson. We'll talk to you soon.